Today our topic is solving equations by adding or subtracting. So our essential question is how can I solve one-step equations using addition and subtraction? Inverse operations are operations that undo one another. So please write that on your piece of paper. Inverse operations, operations that undo one another. So inverse operations would be adding and subtracting. They undo one another and then multiplying and dividing. They're the opposite operation. It's also another word, inverse or opposite. And then isolate the variable. Get the variable alone. I can tell you right now, this topic you are going to see again in eighth grade, and it's going to get more complicated. You're going to see it in ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade. So my suggestion would be understand it now, because it'll make your life easier. We have two properties of equality that we're going to be using. The addition property of equality means whatever is added to one side of the equal sign must be added to the other side. So here we have an algebraic example. If A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C. We had to add C to both sides. To give you a numerical example, which sometimes helps a little bit better, if we have 5 equals 5, if I'm going to add 7 to the left side of the equal sign, I need to add 7 to the right side to keep it true. Otherwise, it's not true anymore. But 5 plus 7 is 12, and 5 plus 7 is 12. So adding 7 to both sides kept the equation equal. And then the same thing is true for subtraction. Whatever is subtracted from one side of the equation must be subtracted from the other side. So if we have A equals B, and we subtract C from the left, we have to subtract C from the right. We are going to use those properties to solve the equations, okay? And then we are going to check our solution to make sure we're right. First equation is x plus 6 equals 4. Our goal when we are solving is isolate the variable. If you forgot what it means, just look up at your vocabulary. It means get the variable all by itself. That's our goal. So we have to look at this equation. Where do we see the variable? I see a variable right here. That's x. Right now I'm adding 6 to x, but I want to get that variable all by itself, which means I don't want the 6 there. No more 6. So to undo plus 6, I have to use the opposite or the inverse operation. Opposite of plus 6 is minus 6. So I'm going to minus 6 on the left. However, whatever I subtract from one side, to keep it equal, I have to subtract it from the other side. So I'm going to minus 6 on both sides. Here I didn't do anything to x. That x comes down. 6 minus 6. This is 6 minus 6. That is 0. That's nothing. It goes away. Equals, what's 4 minus 6? That's negative 2. So x equals negative 2. To check it, we take the original equation. x plus 6 equals 4. And we replace x with our answer. So we take negative 2, put it in for x, and check. This is what we did the last set of notes, but we didn't have to solve it. We just checked it. Is negative 2 a solution? Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. Does 4 equal 4? Yes, it does. Next example, we have b minus 12 equals negative 49. Again, our goal is to isolate the variable. Get that variable all by itself. So first, find the variable. There it is, b. Then we're going to draw these, what I like to call, railroad tracks around the equal sign. So we remember where that equal sign is. Because we have the left side of the equation, and then we have the right side of the equation. We want this variable b to be all by itself, which means we can't have this minus 12 there. We don't want a minus 12. We got to get rid of it. What is the opposite of minus 12? Well, the opposite of minus 12 would be to add 12. Opposite inverse operations. So I'm going to add 12 to the left hand side, which means I need to add 12 to the right hand side to make everything equal. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. It goes away. That's our goal. We want to get rid of it. So then b is all by itself. That's our goal. b 
equals, and then we just have to do some addition. Negative 49 plus 12 is negative 37. You do have access to calculators, so if you are struggling with those operations, please use your calculator. Now we just need to check it. Again, to check, we write down the original equation. Take our answer, plug it in for that variable. We have negative 37 minus 12 equals negative 49. Negative 37 minus 12 means I spent $37. Then I went and I spent 12 more dollars, which means total I spent $49. Does negative 49 equal negative 49? Yes, it does. Last two examples are very similar, except for now we just have decimals, which work the same. They're just decimal numbers. They're just fractions of numbers. So here we have D plus negative 4.2 equals negative 7. Now, this can get a little tricky for some students because we have an addition sign and a negative sign. But really, adding a negative is subtracting. So if you need to rewrite it as subtraction, go ahead. Because that means D minus 4.2 equals negative 7. Now, looking at that, we want to get our variable all by itself. We have to get rid of this minus 4.2. To get rid of it, we have to undo it. We have to do the opposite. The opposite of minus 4.2 or negative 4.2 is positive or plus. So we're going to add 4.2 to the left, add 4.2 to the right. Now, negative 4.2, positive 4.2. They make zero. We bring down our variable. So now it's all by itself, which is awesome. That's our goal. And we do negative 7 plus 4.2, which is negative 2.8. And that's our final answer. We can check it. Original equation is D plus negative 4.2 equals negative 7 put our answer in for our variable and we get negative 2.8 plus negative 4.2 equals negative 7. Figure out if that's true by doing the operation. Negative 2.8 plus negative 4.2. I spent $2.8, spent $2.80, and then I spent $4.20, so I spent $7. Negative 7 equals negative 7. So our answer is correct. This last example here, we have 40 equals W minus negative 5.5. That double negative becomes one big plus sign. So this is really 40 equals W plus 5.5. So let's rewrite that. 40 equals W plus 5.5. Draw our railroad tracks. Get that equal sign. Find your variable. Where's our variable? Our variable is right here. It's W. We want that to be all by itself, which means on that side of the equal sign, we don't want this 5.5. We want it to go away. What's the opposite of plus 5.5? The opposite would be minus 5.5, which means if I minus it from the right-hand side, I have to minus it from the left-hand side. 5.5 minus 5.5 is 0, which means we have W left on that side only, which is our goal. Get the variable by itself. Isolate that variable. 40 minus 5.5 is 34.5. I would like you to check it on your own. Do the check. Bring it to class. Show me that you know how to check it. That's all the video notes I have for you today. Thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.